Today we spend more time with those we work with than those we live with. Do you know that? Because we go to work early morning, we come back in the evening and we have a proper interaction with those we work with. And yet, let me tell you what else happens. When we come back home, our kids are sleeping and sometimes we are wide awake but sitting in front of a TV, a computer or a telephone. That's what's happening. So have you interacted with those you live with? No. But do you interact with those you work with? Yes. So many people are getting married at the workplace. Now do you know why? Because we're interacting with people so much more than we would at home. And once you get married, the marriage doesn't work. Why? Because now you're living with them. I hope you're following what I'm saying here. You married them because you work with them. Now that you're living with them, the marriage is not working because you're no longer working with them. This is what it is. So this is why work with those you live with. Work on your marriage. That's what they say. You know what that means? That means like you spend time interacting at work, you must come home and do the same thing. Switch off your phones. You know, it can't just be work all the time. I tell people one of the biggest failures of parents is that they give preference to money over children. So you might say, well, we have to provide food. We're not talking about providing food. We're talking of extra and excess, which means your salary is already $10,000 a month. And now because you want another $1,000, you allow them to phone you at any time of the night or day back at home every single day of your life for the rest of the year. What was the point of getting married? What was the point of having children? You rather have married your money and you rather have really looked at your money as your own kids, your offspring. What was the point? So you need to set yourself a, a, a deadline or should I say a limit. If I this particular time I knock off, it's over. Sometimes if it's your own business, you might not be able to do that. But you need to also set yourself a limit in terms of if I am earning so much. Yes, if I get a salary increment, Alhamdulillah. But after that, inshallah, I'll start cutting my hours a little bit. You know, some people have their own business. So they worked very hard for 10 years. From what time to what time? Say, for example, working hours eight to five. If it's your own business, you need to work from seven to six. One more hour on either side of the day because it's your own business. But if you do that for more than 10 years, you have not succeeded. Why? Because it's your own business, you now need to start delegating things. You need to create a manager. You need to create a director. You need to step back. You need to start enjoying your life and your money. You need to start enjoying it with the right people, your children, you are a parent. So now what happens? You have a manager who manages. So now you come to work at nine o'clock and you leave at three. Where does the excess time go? I drop my children off to, to school and I pick them up. Alhamdulillah. Some people might be thinking, oh, the managers, they might pinch. You need to cater for that. You need, there needs to be an allowance. And nowadays you have CC TV, subhanallah. You can have it all over the show. You can actually have so much that you know technology here in Singapore. On your mobile phone, you can sit and watch what's going on everywhere. You can have 20 cameras at your workplace and you can you know, continue in your surveillance of it with your mobile phone. You know what I'm talking about. So what that means is you need to spend a little bit more time for things that are now more important. You cannot keep on. Some people increase and say, no, my business has gone big. So now I go at four o'clock and in the morning and I come back at nine o'clock at night. Why did you have children and why did you get married? And if that is really the case, take all your children and your spouse and everyone to your workplace and operate from there. <laughs> yes. You haven't had breakfast, you haven't had lunch, you haven't had supper with your children and it's been the whole week. Come weekend, we're going golfing. Golf. Go and play golf. Allahu Akbar. Golf. I'm not talking of VW golf. We're talking of the golf, the Tiger Woods thing. Allah protect us from that type of behavior. So my brothers and sisters, I want to add something even more important. Making time for your maker, your Rabb. If you don't make time for him, it's not like you just suddenly going to have the link with your maker and you haven't made time. Look, I can give you a powerful example. For your business and mine, we will do so much in order to develop it. For your salary and mine, we will do so much in order to get a better one, right? What about in order to develop my link with my maker? Imagine if your boss tells you, you know what? I give you an increment of 50% and I only want you to increase half an hour a day. 
50%. That means from my $10,000 a month, it's becoming 15,000 and only half an hour incre you know, in time. I say, yes, 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 no problem. I tell you what, my boss, increase me one hour and increase the salary 100%. That's what we would say. But Allah is telling you, I'm asking you for 24 minutes, one minute for every hour that I give you in the day. Are you ready? And what will I give you in return? Something worth more than your entire salary. The fact that you are breathing, you are alive, you are seeing, you are watching, you are hearing, you can walk, you can eat, you are clothed, and you have so much. I gave you absolutely everything, and I'm asking you for every hour that I've allowed you to live, give me back one minute. Brothers and sisters, food for thought, isn't it? Food for thought, Allahu Akbar. Why do they say food for thought? Have you ever thought of it? That also is food for thought. <laughs> So this is why we say you need to make time for your maker. Yes, make time for your family, but they need to watch you. They need to see you prioritize in your life. They will salute you because you will have taught them without even speaking to them that this is how you prioritize. For 10 years, I worked very hard. Then I cut down because I needed to make time for my family and children. And thereafter, as my child grew up a little bit older, in the teenage years, I was with my child and I was there whenever he or she needed me. That is a parent. That is a parent. We are not there for our children nowadays. So who's there for our child? Can I tell you? I'm trying to think of names of movie stars. They are there for our children. Tom Hanks. Who else? So many others. I don't even know their names. I just know the one. I don't know why. We read it somewhere. I think. But to be honest with you, he's entertaining our children. And so are the others. And what are they doing? They're just acting in front of them all day. And the kids are so happy and excited. So now he wears clothes, not like yours, but like Tom Hanks's. And he talks, not like you, but like those guys there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and he walks, not like you, but he walks like, you know, with a bounce he's in, his, in his legs and his feet. And the way he talks, the way he walks, the way he operates, what's cool to him is not what you consider cool in this heat of Singapore. It is what is considered cool on the screen. So these are the people who are now bringing up our children. Why? I wasn't even bothered to be there when my child needed me most. He turned to the internet or she turned to the net and some ugly person who was there as a wolf waiting in ambush to eat my innocent child has got hold of my daughter Astaghfirullah. for example this is just an example because i wasn't there and she had to turn to a chat room in order to release some steam this is what's going on talk about parental guidance are you seeing we are talking of current problems reality on the ground what is happening you don't know where our children are turning for help that you are not offering them as a parent when your child needs help, who would you like that child to turn? We don't even have patience with our children. So it brings me to the next point, And that is the point of patience. You need a lot of patience. Like we say, sacrifice a lot. When your child comes up to you with something weird, don't just shun them. Address the issue and not in a way that will chase the child away. Gone are those days when you could just slap a child into position. It's no longer that way. You know, they say when you are balancing a wheel, have you ever watched them balancing a wheel? The wheel goes around and they put a little small piece of lead, a few little point milligrams in order to get that straight. And they do it so tirelessly, slowly but surely, and they carry on until it says zero. When it says zero, they release the tire, they put in the next one. Have you watched it happening? I'm sure you would. Why? Because one small gram more, this side or that side, will really cause a big disturbance on the wheel. The most beautiful of motor vehicles, which might be a Rolls Royce, can have such a wheeze or such a trembling feeling because of one gram of lead which was put on the wrong side of the wheel or at the wrong place at the wrong time. You follow? So with us, our children are more important than the wheels on the cars. We need to spend much more time with them. And you need to be very, very careful because one gram, one milligram that you might place on the wrong place of that particular child will result in a problem. You know, before we, when we were young, we used to have springy heads. You know what's a springy head? 
you, you are looking forth and you get one slap on your face and this is what happens. It comes back. So you are still looking at the straight path. Today, the children, you cannot slap them anymore. Why? They have sticky heads. The difference between a springy head and a sticky head. You know what's a sticky head? They are looking. They made a little blunder. You slap them. It's now stuck that way. So they're no longer looking in the right direction. We had a springy head where they would slap us and we still say, Dad, I love you. I still love you. That's how it was. Now, slap. I don't love you anymore. You are the worst. How could you slap me? You raised your hand. Okay. And they're not, they don't come back home that evening. Where did they go? To a guy who promised them something on a chat room. That's what happened. Or someone else. A cool dude who was looking cool outwardly because he was on drugs and having the cigarettes and everyone was around him. So they wanted to be accepted and they went there. You have a responsibility as a parent. Speak beautifully to your child. Talk to them, listen to them, even when they tell you something weird, something strange. It's because they would like you to clarify it for them. At least Allah brought it to your attention.